Coming up on Metro File this week, we celebrate an Amazon, a quintessential businesswoman and a lover of God, Apostle Falonsho Alakija. She is the latest septuagenarian and she shows celebrated in her own special way. But not after she got up close and personal with Metrofile, telling us all about her life at 17. Yes, it's all about Apostle Falon Show Alakija on the show today. Welcome to Metrofile, a 30 minute special edition dedicated solely to this great woman of God. Now, trust me, you don't want to miss it. You will certainly learn a thing or two from her life's journey. So let's do this in the next 30 minutes, like I said. So kindly be mindful of flash images while we do that. Once again, welcome to the program. I am Ogetuku Osi Oyelude. Now, Apostle Falonisho Alakija needs no introduction to many. Now, the vice chairman of Fanfa Oil and one time Forbes richest black woman on earth is in a celebratory mode at the moment. Why not? She has just been welcomed into the seventh floor. Now, we'll celebrate her and her achievements on the show today. Take a look. Nigerian business mogul, fashion designer, published author and evangelist, Apostle Falonosho Alakija has proven that you could be a jack of all trade and still the master of all. Her success rate in her various endeavors places her on a pedestal in the society. But what is more endearing is that the vice chairman of Fanfa Oil, a Nigerian oil exploration company, is a wife, mother, and grandmother to many, both biological and non-biological. Her life is one encased with distinction, remarkable and outstanding achievements. She has forayed into so many territories with a sincere desire to contribute her own quota towards the growth and development of Nigeria and also help those in need, both physical and spiritual. All these qualities were celebrated as she joined the Noble Club of the Septuagenarians. Let's pause the dancing for a minute to find out more about this woman who was one time Forbes richest black woman in the world. She not only welcomed us into her office in Ikui, but also into her life over the last seven decades. Wow, I'm grateful for life, that I'm still counted amongst the living and that uh, one is still breathing, moving and uh, eating and you're not uh, strapped to a bed somewhere we thank god we have everything to thank god for because there are so many people around when the situations are a lot worse than you you could uh, you know ever think or imagine the grace of god is indeed sufficient in her life and she's particularly grateful to God for that, as she's still basking in the euphoria of her 70th birthday celebration. This new age is very special for Apostle Falonisho Alakija, so she's celebrating in a special way. Having a, a virtual uh, praise and worship to celebrate Jesus, I thought was the perfect answer. For me, yeah. <laughs> it's the perfect answer.
As we join you to celebrate, we are tapping into the anointing of longevity upon your life. We also have to acknowledge the fact that um, it's a long walk to 70, laced with all the good and the challenging times. Do you want to give us insight about life leading up to 70 for you? Well, I was born in a polygamous family. 52 children, eight wives, and uh, those times were good and bad. Good because my siblings, the 52 of us, <laughs> were growing up together. You knew yourselves? Uh, pardon? You knew yourselves, 52 we of you? We all know ourselves, all of us. Some are abroad because they were educated abroad, some are back, um, some are still living abroad. Um, we were all friends and we are still all friends. There were times when during the year, coming from a Muslim family, when we would go home to our hometown in Ikorodu and we would celebrate uh, the Muslim fest festivals. Um, we always looked forward to those periods. A lot of us were in boarding schools, uh, at home and abroad. Um, well, we all eventually grew up and everybody living their lives differently, separately, you know, um, different careers. I had a fun childhood, um, four years of which was spent abroad um, from the age of seven to 11, studying uh, in boarding school in Wales. Um, that, that formed, um, left a, it left a big um, in, impression on me, uh, an indelible mark, I would say. Uh, that uh, helped to form the person I am today. Educated in Europe, she first embarked on a career in office administration. Then she went into banking, where she remained for years. She later followed her heart and creative calling to establish her own business in the Nigerian fashion industry. Her fashion brand, Supreme Stitches, was one of the top brands in the country. As a fashion and style icon, she rebranded as Rose of Sharon House of Fashion, through which she promoted Nigerian culture with fashion and style. I used to go to my mom's uh, store when I was... Uh, um, on holidays from boarding school to help her out with her textile trade. There I, I cut my teeth with uh, um, knowing more about textiles, textures, uh, fabrics generally and colors and, um, and also about marketing and uh, merchandising generally. So I got to learn a lot of that which I think also was part of what formed my decision to become a fashion designer. Um, my father used to, and my mother, used to both um, order textiles from Aus Austria. Um, they would design it, uh, create uh, what they wanted and order it. My father would sell to my mom and uh, some of his other wives and their friends within the ma uh, market space. And uh, um, that was part of what developed me into, or, or got me interested more in everything related to textiles and creativity. I left the bank to go and study fashion design in England and I came back to set up my, uh, my fashion label and it hasn't been the same ever since. Her drive to achieve even more made her to venture into oil and gas when she turned 40. And together with her husband, Mr. Mudukba Lakija, they started off what is now known as Famfa Oil, an oil exploration company where she is currently the vice chairman. Now, uh, you were named uh, the richest black woman in the world by Forbes. How much of a burden did that bring for you? Well, um, it certainly did change a few things 
However, it didn't change who I am. There's a lot of expectation from the public. Uh, people believe that, well, you have it, you, uh, you should just spread it <laughs> to everybody. But you find that God has sent you to some people and your focus would be more on where God has sent you. Yes, you will still do others, you understand me, but you can't do everything and you can't help everybody. But everybody believes that they, they should partake of what you have. You understand? Entitlement mentality. But it can't work like that. And even if they were in the shoes of people like me, they won't do it like that either. It's just impossible. You can't help everybody. You, you can help as many as you can, but you can't help everybody. And you can't please everybody, no matter how much you try. The oil and gas industry is a male-dominated industry in Nigeria, but Apostle Florence Alakija doesn't see gender as a barrier. I don't see myself as, oh, I'm a woman, and so because I'm a woman, I can't operate here, I can't operate there. I believe that what a man can do, a woman can do. You understand me? Um, I'm focused in my ways, I know what I want, and I know um, when, 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 when to say no. And I know when not to accept a no, you understand, for an answer. So um, I don't see it as a problem. We all have brains, yeah. whether you're a man or a woman. But sometimes we have to put in double effort, extra effort to prove our point. For, for the uh, male gender to accept us, you understand. And when they know that you won't take no for an answer and that... Uh, you, 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 you'll uh, be able to step in when you need to step in. You'll be able to do what you have to do when you need to do it. You'll be able to do what they can do. You won't have a problem and they'll accept you. Now, you're first a wife, a mother, a grandmother and a businesswoman. How do you manage all these roles all together? You need to draw up a schedule, you understand me, uh, that would work for your for your life and for your family um, that would encompass everybody, you understand me, as far as family is concerned. And you need to balance your time. Um, <clears throat> for instance, I know that one of the measures that I took at a point in time um, <clears throat> to manage my time was that as far as business was concerned, I would... Um, let people know that they don't have to see me physically to get things done. I would say, listen, the phone will help you and I. Um, for many years, I didn't have a, a cook or chef, you understand? But with the more demand being placed on my time, you know, I sat my husband down and said, listen, we're going to need a cook. <laughs> you understand? Um, in, in those days, what I used to do was I would get my steward to prepare some things ready for me so that when I come back from work, I can rustle everything together very quickly and dinner's ready. You understand? Um, it got to a time when uh, even one cook wasn't going to be enough. Right. But I love cooking and I always make sure that at weekends, uh, now and again, I'm cooking what my husband enjoys, what my children enjoy. You understand me so that they still feel my presence and it's not and and, and, and it's not oh uh, what we what she used to cook for us we don't eat it anymore we can't get it anymore we are, the way she cooks it anymore so that you know you are still offering them that now, now and again You have um, added another role 
to all the ones that you have at the moment, channeling your time, resources and um, energy into, you know, humanitarian work and, you know, your ministry. Um, what gap did you see that you want to fill? The humanitarian was that I asked him, Lord, where do you want me to help? How do you want me to say thank you, to show my gratitude to you? And he gave me a scripture. And that scripture was in the book of James, chapter uh, 1, verse 27, to look after widows and orphans. You understand? So, that, since 2008, when we launched the foundation, Rose of Sharon Foundation, that has been growing. And you find that there have been more people who have been asking for assistance here and there that's outside uh, the Wid Widows and Orphans Foundation. You understand? So I couldn't shut my eyes to it. So we've been, been helping those as well as much as I can. Now let's take a minute. We go on a quick break. When we return, we continue to celebrate this great humanitarian. Join us again. There is no stopping the mother of four who is currently the Chancellor of the Osho State University, Ushubu. She recently launched her autobiography, Blossoming with the Hand That Gives the Rose, a 402-page book that chronicles the last 10 years of her life. I wrote that book because I had promised God that for every 10 years that he spares my life for after my first autobiography that I would do a sequel. So this is my first sequel to Growing with the Hand That Gives Rose. This is blossoming. This is blossoming with the hand that gives rose. Um, I've seen uh, changes in my life uh, in the last 10 years which have drawn me closer to him. You understand? Um, and there's no way that I would want to live my life without documenting them and giving him the glory. Had it not been for him, do you think I'd be standing here? I would have been consumed. She narrates the encounter that led her to Christ. Glory and honor are yours forever. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. I do know that when I was 40, I was struggling um, to um, get a, a, a license for oil exploration and production, rather. And it, it was, you know, it was kind of tough, you understand? And I knew that I couldn't do it on my own, uh, within human comprehension, that I was going to need God, <laughs> you understand? So I went looking for him, and I did find him. And it was in the process of those years of uh, trying to make things work, trying to um, get a breakthrough, that I found him. And it hasn't been the same ever since. Uh, those doors into his heart continue to open and I'm, I'm, I'm living it, I'm enjoying it, I am... Um, seeing the benefits of it. A woman of strong faith. Part of her 70th celebration includes a special Thanksgiving seven-hour praise and worship session with select performances from leading gospel artists in Nigeria, including Dari Justified, BJ Sachs, Chigoze Wisdom, Nathaniel Bassi, amongst others.
many boxes that I have uh, put before the Lord have been ticked. I'm not saying he has ticked all of them. I'm not saying I've ticked all of them. Um, but there's still, there, there, there's still a long way to go because I've been saying to the Lord that I want to live to 120 in good health. He has plans for my life. He has plans for my family. I want to be able to carry my great-grandchildren, you understand, in this lifetime. And it will manifest. So I'm continuing in fulfillment. Seventy has got nothing on Apostle Alakija. And she tells me she's just getting started. I'm just warming up. <laughs> I'm just warming up. I'm not tired. Um, as I said, by his grace, I will still be strong. I'll, because the Bible says that we'll be fresh and we have, we'll be flourishing, even in our old age. I'm believing it. I'm holding on to it. And it will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, what are the important lessons uh, life has taught you in the last 70 years? Never take no for an answer. I learned it. I experienced it. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be here today. It's because I learned to reject no for an answer. Celebrating Jesus from year 61 to year 70. Let us shout hallelujah. Dancing is one of the many things that brings her so much joy. I can be on the dance floor for five hours. I can be there for six hours. I'm always the last on the dance floor as far as my parties are concerned. Because I would, uh, the way I do it is I, I make sure I look after all my guests, uh, make everybody happy. Uh, because when I get on that dance floor, you won't see me coming to ask you whether you're okay anymore. I'm just going to carry on boogieing. She is very passionate about the country and its people. She hopes to see a better Nigeria. I'd like to see a Nigeria where education has not gone downhill. I'd like to see a Nigeria where there's medicines in our medicine, that medicines are available in our hospitals. You understand? There's so much that has gone down the drain. What's all this retrogression? That's going on. I'd like to see a new Nigeria. Apostle Falonsho Alakija was not only celebrated in Lagos, but also in Oshun State and people from all over the world who joined virtually. We join everyone to wish her a happy 70th birthday. Okay, it's been all about celebrating Apostle Falon Show Alakija. I learned so much by just having a chat with her. And I want to also believe that you learned something and even got to know her even more. Once again, congratulations to her. Well, viewers, that is it on the show today. Thank you so much for watching. Follow us on our Instagram page for more. And also, you can reach us with a number blinking right below your screen. Once again, thank you so much for watching. 
I am Ogechiko Osi Oyelude. I see you again.